with the spirit of his love. Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have those things that hold you and his spirit like a dove will descend.
Sunday, a day when we get to celebrate the movement of the Holy Spirit, which unites us together as beloved community and sends us out into the world to share God's love with all. We invite those of you who are gathering with us on Facebook Premiere today to introduce yourself in the comment section and to participate in our service there as well by sharing prayer requests or milestone celebrations. If you would like to follow along with a copy of our bulletin, you can find one posted below. If you join us today on YouTube, we are glad that you are here and that we can worship together today. There is a slide in the middle of our worship service uh, with information about where you can go on our website to share prayer requests if you have them this morning. We believe that wherever we are in this journey of faith, God meets us right where we are and we are welcome here. So we gather now for worship today, spread across the Hutchinson community, across the state of Minnesota and across the world. And we do so as a community seeking to see the image of God in all of creation. So you join me today in our No Longer Strangers prayer. Let us pray together. Gracious God, help us to see your image revealed in all of creation especially in those whom we call stranger. Guide us as we seek to join you in journeying alongside all in need. Amen. Hello, friends. I invite you to come and gather close to your screen as we join in a conversation together today. So today is Pentecost Sunday. It's a day where we gather to celebrate the movement of the Spirit at work in, in and among us. Today, we root ourselves in a story from the book of Acts, where we hear of the Spirit showing up and showing up in a sound of rushing wind and in flames of fire. We hear of the Spirit igniting within the people gathered a rich diversity of language as they all begin to proclaim God's love, which is for all creation. So today we're reminded that the Spirit is at work among us. And yet we might wonder, how do we know? What does the Spirit look like? Or how do I attune myself to seeing and engaging in the work of the Spirit? So today in our service, we invite you to gather some things that might remind you of the Spirit's presence. It could be a fan or a candle, like the wind and the flames. It could be bubbles or uh, fabric wands that you wave in the air, some ribbons um, or pinwheels even, things that help remind us that the Spirit is at work in the movement. The Spirit is at work right here in our very midst. She intercedes on our behalf when we pray, and she's present wherever we see love and joy, peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. So today, have a little bit of fun of, of dancing with the Spirit, of engaging in this invitation for us to celebrate an ongoing Pentecost, that the Spirit wasn't just at work a long time ago, but she's at work each and every day and each and every one of us. So will you pray with me together? Will you pray with me today? Will you repeat after me? Holy Spirit, we give thanks for your work among us. Give us eyes to see you at work today 
and help us to join in living out your love for the world. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Dear friends, let us confess that God is God and we are not. Risen Lord, we admit that we are slow to believe and even slower to follow where you lead us. We doubt your promise, divide your people, and fail to proclaim the power of your resurrection. We choose to live small lives when you have given us the biggest gift of all, your eternal life. Forgive us. Raise us up to a place where we can serve you faithfully. Dear friends, hear the good news. Christ is arisen, bringing gifts of life, mercy, and pardon for sin. Believe that you are forgiven and go out and live in the joy of your Lord's resurrection in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. And dear friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Your friends, let us pray together. Abba, Father, you have adopted us as heirs of your kingdom, and we have inherited the gift and presence of the Holy Spirit. Through the fire of the Spirit, make us generous givers of all that you have bestowed upon us. For the sake of the one whose fire brings light and life to all the world. Jesus Christ. Amen. Our story and God's story continues with a reading from the book of Acts and with a reading from the book of Galatians. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5 and chapter 5, verses 16 through 26. My point is this. Heirs, as long as they are minors, are no better than slaves, though they are the owners of all the property. But they remain under guardians and trustees until the date set by the father. So with us. While we were minors, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. Live by the spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if we are led by the spirit, we are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. Stay tuned for the continuing saga that is our story and God's story. Thanks be to God. We are born into a windy world. This is what the late author Rachel Held Evans writes in a book of hers titled Searching for Sundays. We are born into a windy world where the spirit is as steady as a breeze and as strong as a hurricane. Throughout her chapter titled Breath, Rachel Held Evans gives voice to the beautiful mystery that is the Holy Spirit. She writes that the Spirit is like breath, as close as our lungs, like fire, deceptively polite in its dance atops the wax and wick of our church candles. It's as wild as a storm when unleashed, like wind, which knows no perimeter, traveling to every corner of a cornerless world and amplifying the atmosphere. There is no city, no village, no wilderness where you cannot find it, she writes. So pay attention. Pay attention to where the spirit is stirring. 
where she is showing up unexpectedly, burning, restoring, moving, creating, unfolding, unearthing something new in our very midst. Well, this unexpected drama of this windy world was certainly something the early church in the book of Acts experienced on this Pentecost day. As all gathered together in one place, in fact, I imagine it would have been hard to miss. Faithful Jews had come from all over, from diverse lands, to gather in the temple in Jerusalem to celebrate the festival of Pentecost. Now, this was a festival that took place about 50 days after the Passover, and it was originally celebrated as the first fruits of the harvest. And so we're told that as Jesus' disciples gathered there among the others from across the land, it had been 50 days since Jesus' resurrection, 10 days since his bodily ascension into heaven. The disciples had been waiting, curious and perhaps a bit impatient in wondering what they were to do now, what would come next. They knew that Jesus had said that he would be sending them the promised helper, the Holy Spirit. Jesus had called them out to be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria to the very ends of the earth. And yet this day they gathered, unknowing that such a drama would unfold before them. For we're told that it was suddenly When from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. As Eugene Peterson translates in the message, without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, a gale force. No one could tell where it came from, and it filled the whole building. Can you imagine that sight? that sound, this experience of being part of such a windy world. Then when like wildfire, we're told the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. Wind and crackling fire mixing with the beautiful sound of voices in all different tongues and cultures proclaiming the radical good news that God was up to something. God was doing a new thing. God was at work right there in their midst. Yes, can you imagine the sight, the sound, the experience of being part of such a windy world? Well, all too often, I think this story of Pentecost from the book of Acts has been seen within the Christian church is a once and done celebration. We gather on an annual basis, 50 days after Easter, to commemorate this day, to celebrate the birthday of the church. We sing and remember a time way back when, when the Spirit showed up among God's diverse and faithful people in the sound of rushing wind and in tongues as a fire. And yet I wonder, what if we saw Pentecost not just as a single moment in history, but as a part of everyday life. Do we still see the Holy Spirit stirring among us? Maybe not in rushes of wind filling an entire house or in tongues of fire resting on the heads of those who've gathered, but do we see the Spirit at work? Do we see the Spirit among us moving, breathing, leading, stirring, and inviting us today? For what does it mean to follow the Spirit, to be guided by the Spirit? What would it look like for us to live each and every day as part of this windy world to which we have been born? What questions would surface within us What curiosity, fear, or worry arise as part of this new adventure? Yes, what might it look like for us to follow the Spirit who knows no perimeter as we join in this work of witnessing to the good news of the gospel to Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria to the very ends of the earth? And what shape might this witnessing take 
for us and for our community of faith as we gather in our rich diversity of thought, perspective, experiences, and expression. The story of Pentecost is a story that celebrates the movement of the Spirit within ordinary creation. It celebrates the rich diversity of culture, language, and expression rejoicing in the wideness of humanity. In fact, as one theologian writes in the Christian century, Pentecost invites us into a new way of engaging with difference, not just with different languages, but with all the ways we are marked as different from one another. At Pentecost, The Holy Spirit speaks through the differences without converting them into sameness. People aren't invited to give up their languages, their cultures, and convert to the same way of speaking and thinking. Through the Spirit, difference is made holy. And that is something that Paul has been speaking about throughout his letter to the church in Galatia, a letter which we have been walking through these past few weeks as they have wrestled with what it means to live together in their diversity, Paul has written to them to remind the people of God gathered there that their difference is holy. It's not something to be changed or converted. They're joined together as beloved community in their rich diversity, united in the belovedness that God has bestowed upon them. It is not circumcision or adhering to Jewish culture or food laws that saves them, but rather the grace of God, which is sheer gift for all. So as Paul writes throughout this letter to the church in Galatia, he does so to remind them of what is central, that the Spirit is at work among them, drawing them together in faith, in community, in belovedness. And as they wrestle with what it looks like to live together as this diverse community, they're told to be guided by the Spirit, to hold central the good news of the gospel, that they are beloved children of God, that their diversity is something to be welcomed and embraced, and to trust that the Spirit will lead them into what is yet to be. In his book, The Agile Church, Dwight Shiley gives us a metaphor for what it means to live and to be guided by the Spirit. Whereas we often want a prescribed roadmap for what is ahead of us, knowing where exactly our journey will take us, Shiley suggests leaning into the gift of improvisation. Building upon jazz musician and organizational scholar Frank Barrett, Shiley suggests the metaphor of jazz as a, as a model for us in understanding communal life together. Shiley shares, jazz is less about executing a predetermined script than it is about improvisation, whose Latin root means not seen ahead of time. Jazz is about learning while doing, Embracing imperfection, trying things out and pushing boundaries, but all within shared structures and patterns. It's about collaboration and accompaniment, freedom and innovation. And whether we ourselves have been members of a jazz band or occasional hearers of this style of music, Frank Barrett shares in his own book, that jazz only works when the musicians are engaged in generous listening, an unselfish openness to what the other is offering, and a willingness to help others be as brilliant as possible. The language of jazz is about sharing together in an emerging future. It is saying yes to what has been and building upon that yes into what is yet to be. To live by the Spirit is sheer gift. We do not have to earn the Spirit's presence in our life. She is already there. She's at work within and among us, claiming us as beloved, uniting us in community together and working in and through us so that together we might live out God's dream of love for the world. And yet to be guided by the Spirit 
is this work of active listening. It's this work of discernment, of opening ourselves to live into a future that is not yet known, into a future not seen ahead of time. It's the work of tuning ourselves to God and to one another. It's about taking risks and trying new iterations as we trust that the Spirit is the breath of life at work in and among us, creating us and sustaining us in faith and calling us out to share the fruit of the Spirit with the world. Charlie goes on to say that the church must trust that the Spirit of God is indeed alive and working among God's ordinary people as something new is brought forth in, through, and among them. The metaphor of jazz is instructive as an alternative imaginative space for churches to inhabit in ministry. When we identify the inherited practices and stories that order and shape our identity as people of the way of Jesus, we are free to improvise upon them in new ways. So dear friends, today I wonder if as we follow God into the future that is not yet seen, may we know that today and always, we are indeed born into a windy world. A world where the Spirit is already at work within and among us. Yes, I wonder if we may find rest in this beautiful gift that we are God's beloved. We are called in our rich diversity to be part of God's church in this world. We are invited into the ongoing everyday journey that is Pentecost. Yes, may we see this adventure ahead, though unscripted and unknown, as a place of deep exploration and learning. For just as the Spirit showed up on that first Pentecost day so long ago, she continues to show up right here among us to work in and through us the ordinary people that we are. She continues to show up to work in unexpected and shocking ways. Yes, she is at work right here, filling us with the creative and life-giving music, the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And she is empowering us that we may go out to share this music with the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, as we move now into a time of prayer, I will close each petition with God of life, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Life-giving spirit, like on that first Pentecost day, you are at work right here among us, breathing life into all creation and calling your church to join you in your mission for the sake of the world. Help us to see you moving among us this day, filling us in faith and uniting us in service in your world. Ignite in us imagination and renew within us a passion to live into our call to be your church, living out in words and in deeds the good news of your love for the world. God of life, hear our prayer. Life-giving spirit, we pray for this world and for our siblings who are in need of healing this day. We pray for India, for Palestine and Israel, and for all of your beloved around this world who know sickness, conflict, injustice, oppression, and death. Be present in your world, O God, and be present in us, that we might continue to join you in striving for your vision of justice and peace for all creation. God of life, hear our prayer. Life-giving spirit, as this academic year draws to a close, we give thanks for this year of learning together. In the midst of hardships, COVID contact tracing, ever fluid schedules, cancellations and changes, you have remained faithful and present in the lives of students, families, teachers, paras, social workers, lunch and administrative staff, and all who work as part of our education system. Bring strength where needed to those whose energy is low. Fill the in-person and online classrooms with your care in these final days of learning and bring to all an upcoming season of rest and rejuvenation. God of life, hear our prayer. Life-giving spirit, we pray for your beloved in need of healing this day. Bring health, companionship, comfort, compassion, and peace to all in need. We continue to pray for those who are sick from COVID-19, for medical professionals as they care for them, be with those who tend the sick, with families as they worry and care for loved ones from a distance, with those who are lonely and overwhelmed in grief due to ongoing restrictions and isolation. Be with all who are distributing vaccinations in our community and in your world, and especially with those who care for the most vulnerable among us. Be also with those who are navigating other illnesses this day, with those experiencing anxiety and depression, with those recovering from surgical procedures, and with all who await anxiously for the news of test results or who are beginning new treatment plans. Be with this hurting world, O oh God, with all those who are on hospice care and with all who grieve the death of loved ones. Surround us and this weary world in your abundant love and compassion, God of life, hear our prayer. Life-giving spirit, we know that you hear the prayers that we speak aloud this day, those that we type in comment sections, and those that are yet sized too deep for words. Hold us and this whole world in the abundant love and care of the one who taught us by example, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And dear friends, at this time, I want to offer a word of gratitude for each and every one of you and for your continued support of God's ministry here at River of Hope. 
We give thanks for all the ways in which you continue to financially support God's ministry here and for all the ways you continue to go out into the world to join in transforming lives through Jesus Christ. If you would like more information about how you can participate in our online giving through Simply Giving or information about where you could mail or drop off a check, that information can be found on your screen. Again, thank you for all the ways in which you continue to partner together in God's ministry for the sake of the world. Take my silver and my gold, none of mine would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt use. Take my life that I may be consecrated. Friends, as we prepare now our tables with gifts of bread and wine or juice, the children will lead us in prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts up be blessed. Blessed be God. Blessed be God who is so blessed in all the world who clothes his bed. Amen. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, this is not my table or River of Hope's table, but this is God's table and all are welcome here. If you gather with others in your household today, we invite you to commune one another. And if you gather alone today, please hear these words of promise. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray together. Wellspring of joy, through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, why does our church exist? What is our purpose? We go out to transform lives through Jesus Christ. And now we invite you to gather a bowl of water or some rocks or stones that you may have at your house 
and to join in a time of sharing milestones, those big or small, hopeful or challenging. If you join us online today, we invite you to use the comment section to share your milestones there, that we may hold them alongside you. blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Can you face this way too?